Um, it's exciting to be here. It's an exciting time to be a game developer. Um, there's a lot of choices. There's choices for players uh, and choices for uh, developers as well. Um, you know, there's powerful uh, game consoles. Uh, we saw the impact of social gaming uh, on, uh, to connect players together and create new experiences. Um, mobile phones and tablets have exploded and created a billion dollar industry. Um, and at, at CES we, this year we saw a number of new technologies uh, in the wearable tech, such as uh, fitness trackers, uh, smart watches, things like Google Glass. Um, and and in, in the session, you've heard a lot about you know, ways to spark your creativity and think about new gaming experiences that you can create. And I think um, you know, the, what I would challenge you to do is think about how you can use these new technologies that are coming to market to create new types of play experiences that no one's seen before. Um, our team is, is called Niantic Labs. We're a group within Google. Um, we're, our background is with Google Maps and Google Earth. Um, so we spent years building up this 3D representation of the world. Uh, you know, that included launching satellites into, into space to take imagery um, so that you can see what your neighbors are building in their backyard. Um, but also, you know, the, the, all the work that goes into the street view cars to take imagery um, as, as, so that you can virtually explore the world. And you know, the first thing that um, when you use something like Google Earth, it's a magical experience that first time you use it. Um, but the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, wouldn't it be great to turn this into a game? You know, how can I play on this virtual globe that maps to the real world? And so uh, that was one of the inspirations for our team was you know, to, to take this opportunity of all of these, this proliferation of mobile phones uh, with good data connectivity um, along with this, this mapping layer that we had from Google Maps and Google Earth and to think about ways where you could be the player out in the real world. And with that in mind, we built this game called Ingress as a proof of concept to really explore this space at that, at that intersection of the real world and the virtual world. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Ingress, um, I just wanted to play a short video clip just to give you a taste of what the gameplay is like and what the vibe and the feel of the game is. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the game mechanics and what we've learned from the game. What was the net effect of the Niantic project? We had crossed a threshold in which global security could be at risk. Decrypting the data was the mistake. This is not psychosis or some cognitive break, but an actual takeover of the mind. Much of the public sculpture found in our cities is based on design seeded in the human mind. Certain places have an energy that not only attracts people, but attracts events. The mission of 13 Magnus is to monitor the effects of mind hacking. Obviously, this will be done with the highest of security, to make sure that the ideas do not contaminate or threaten humanity. This all leads to Niantic. I know that many tools will be needed to fight this battle. You just have to know where to look and know what you're seeing. Portals emit exotic matter into our world, and that matter has certain effects on our world. I started noticing that there were energy fields anomalies on Earth all around me. A few of them exhibit properties that are as yet unexplained. I know that there are others out there. What if they're already among us, but we don't realize it? And I must be prepared to work with them or fight them. They are coming. Something's wrong out there in the world. This doesn't feel like a scientific study. The one hope lies in understanding what happened at Niantic. Not all mysteries are solvable, but the joy comes in the pursuit. Time to move. So you can see from that video the feel for Ingress. It's a game, it's all about getting you out, moving in the real world. Um, there, as we thought about designing this game, there were four key principles that were the foundation for the design. The first is the world is the game. So we wanted to take the, you know, the enormous space that is the real world, the Earth, and let you play wherever you are uh, on that, that game board. The other key concept was this notion that you need to move to play. Um, so you know, I, have, I have kids, and, and they love to play at home on game consoles and such, but I get a little nervous that if I left them there, that they would stay and play for 12 hours straight without getting outside. And you know, I, 
I get, I get a little, you know, when, when it's such a nice day outside, um, it feels like you were missing an opportunity to take that play, that fun experience, and move it out into the sunshine, um, out into our communities. Um, also, if you think about things just like uh, fitness and exercise, uh, there's some scary stat that uh, kids uh, spend up to three hours a day in front of a screen, sort of just t tethered to a screen. Um, things like uh, lack of exercise kill as many people as smoking nowadays. Um, so just getting people out and moving has all of these health benefits and, as well um, that help society. Um, another is urban exploration. You know, a point was made earlier that we often uh, have our routine going home uh, and from home to work and back again. Um, and you know, we actually pass by all of these interesting places and people and there's this, this hidden history there. Um, but oftentimes uh, we're just immune to that and we, and we, don't, we, don't, um, we don't see that. So the idea was you know, how can we build an experience in a game um, that gets us to open our eyes to the interesting things around us as we move through the real world. And finally, we wanted uh, this game to be social. Um, you know, it turns out you know, people like to meet other people in the real world. Um, how can a game be used to encourage those connections, um, you know, not just to share virtual game objects via, via Facebook or social networks, but to get people together and create a social game where people are playing together um, and then getting beers together and really building new, new bonds and new friendships and social networks, oftentimes with, uh, with people who they otherwise might not have uh, socialized with or, or interacted with before. So just to give you a sense of some of the game mechanics, so you know, we started with that foundation of taking the Google Maps data. So you can, you can see how um, Ingress runs in your phone, either your Android phone or your iPhone. Um, and it, it presents you with this map view. And it's funny, but you know, oftentimes new players will ask, well, well, how do I move? How do I move my character? And it's like, well, you just lift up your leg and you, know, you move <laughs> forward. Um, it wasn't obvious to them. So you know, we've, we've tried to make the tutorial a little, a little clearer that way. And, um, but the, the triangle there that you see in the middle, that's, that's your location using the, you know, the GPS sensors uh, on your phone. And we've rendered out, out the streets of, in this case, San Francisco. What, what is unique and not what you don't see in Google Maps is you see these bright lit green and blue locations. And that's, that's that virtual reality that we've painted over, over the world. So in, in our game fiction, this scanner sort of lifts the veil over your eyes and lets you see this alternate universe and then that, that you're playing in. In our game, uh, these game locations that you see lit up are called portals. And there's two teams. There's an enlightened faction, which is green, and a resistance Woo. faction, which is blue. We have some enlightened agents in the audience here. Um, and you need to move, you know, you need to get out of your house and you visit these locations in the cities to capture them for your team and link them together and create these fields that help you control area uh, for your team. So it's a little bit, in some levels, like playing Risk, um, but instead of just a few people at the table, you're playing with millions of people around the globe. Um, it's something that people, uh, incorporate into their travel as well. Um, and then the other element you'll see here is these energy dots. So you know, there's, a, there's a game mechanic loop here when you run out of energy, you actually need to you know, take a lap around the block to, to recharge yourself, kind of like uh, you're, you're, you're a Pac-Man almost. Um, we've, we've really tried to build this into this uh, transmedia experience where you can really buy into this fantasy that you're a secret agent. So you're sort of like a 007 James Bond. You're saving the world. Um, and it's something that we really wanted you to feel like you were playing throughout your day. So one of the things we did is we built this website, which is our Intel map, which gives you a global view of everything that's happening in the game around the world. And it's something that you can visit from your, your browser. So you know, I might be stuck in my cubicle at work, and you know, I've got a meeting in five minutes, so maybe I can't run out and play in the streets with my, my, my phone. But you know, while I'm stuck in the office or at home, I can still be uh, checking out the gameplay and planning out my activities for that evening. Um, you can also interact with agents who are in the field. So there's a communications layer where you can chat with other players. What's, what's unique about that is that the chat is targeted based upon geography. So um, it's almost like you have a walkie-talkie. Um, and you send out a message, and then there's, there's a, um, a radius filters for receiving you know, global messages or local messages. So you see this chatter between local players and global, globally between players. And one of the interesting aspects of that is, while I'm stuck in the office, I might be coordinating an operation with other agents who are actually running around in the field. So 
you feel a little bit like in the movie The Matrix where you have the operator who's like telling Neo, you know, where the phone is, run down this street, turn left at Market Street, you know, the portal is on your left, you need to take that out. So there's this fun, fun way for other types of, play, of ways of playing the game and being involved. Um, we've really used, uh, tried to leverage YouTube and video and to have a rich story. You know, a lot of the, the things that you're learning in the, in the sessions today are about how you know, there's the game mechanics, but then also how a rich story can add to that emotional experience with the game. So um, we have uh, this ARG, this alternate reality game going where we drop bits and pieces of puzzles and uh, sort of like CIA type redacted documents. And they're all these bits and pieces of this, of this broader narrative that is also accessible via um, no novellas that we've written and comic books and such and, and web video as well. And then um, we have a weekly YouTube video series called The Ingress Report, where it's sort of like our sports center, um, but it takes all of the cool happenings from the world of Ingress. Some of those are story updates. Um, some of those might be new features that have been added to the game. Others are the accomplishments of players. And you'll see some photos of what players have been doing with this sandbox, with this game. And so we build this really good feedback loop where players do great things. And then we rebroadcast back to them. And then you know, other players see that. And then they want to outdo that and do other cool things. So it's sort of like you know, I want to create, do that great shot in my high school basketball game so I can maybe make it on the sports center. So we've been able to build this community and this feedback between uh, our staff and, and the community at large. Um, some of our key learnings, um, I'd say that the first key learning is that, there's any, that there is demand for this type of game. Um, we have, we've had over 4 million installations. Um, it, it wasn't obvious that there would be demand for this type of game. You know, there were plenty of people who said, well, it's kind of a neat idea, but at the end of the day, gamers don't want to get out of their couch and move. And I think that um, what, with this proof of concept of Ingress, we've been able to show that, no, if you build a compelling experience, there really is this, this sort of new type of experience that will get people out of their routine and get them out and moving uh, to play. Um, we've also seen a, a really intense player engagement with, I think, with the social aspect of the game and also with the story. So, you know, we have this sort of joke that our, one of our, use, our metrics for success is how many tattoos that we can get. And so there's been over 30 tattoos. There's uh, people um, with the enlightened uh, uh, logo of one team and then the resistance logo of the other. Um, social engagement. Here's an example of an actual engagement. This was from our first proposal that happened. Uh, at one of our player meetups where these, and these players actually met playing the game. So um, it's really powerful to see, you know, I don't personally have any tattoos. I think there's a commitment level there, right? That, um, you know, and I think, you know, in some sense, you know, some people, it might seem silly to get a game tattoo, but for a lot of these people, it was a life-changing experience. Like, these might have been people who maybe, you know, felt lonely, who, you know, were in a new city, didn't have as many friends. Um, it's not so much about the game when they get a tattoo. It's more about it's a, it's more of something about like the social connections that they've built in a moment in their life that they felt like was maybe a shift in their life from, you know, towards being uh, either more 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 physical or or um, more social in, in their play. Um, the other thing that we've seen uh, from players is is validation that there is this desire to explore. Um, we've seen players uh, rent helicopters. Uh, this guy, one guy, you know, uh, adapted his wheelchair for ingress, um, adding uh, for us p parents with young kids, you know, adapting the, the baby stroller so they can hold the phone so that you can be firing your weapons in ingress while, while taking your baby for a walk in the park. Um, players on, in their cars, I don't know how safe that is, but um, <laughs> hopefully that they're parking uh, before that. But we've really, um, we've, we've uh, designed the game to really uh, encourage you to uh, walk and bike, you know. So if actually, if you're driving, if you're moving too fast, we detect that and we um, limit the types of actions that you can do in the game. But you see all these people who there's literally stories of people dusting off that bike. Uh, you know, we all have that exercise equipment in our house that you know we hang our laundry on. Um, there's people who um, you know have pulled out their bikes, they've you know gotten the brakes checked, gotten all oiled up again, and they're out using it out in their parks. Um, the other interesting aspect of that that is that connection that we have with these public spaces. When we're out in them, there's stories of people who, the one guy was from Las Vegas. There was a park literally around the corner from his house. But he said that in, in three years, he'd never actually spent any time in that park. And 
you know, it wasn't a great space. You know, he talks about there was, you know, graffiti and potentially some, some crime. Um, but I think as we get more and more of us out into these public spaces, we make those, sa those uh, spaces safer. Um, and then also, we also have build a, a stronger connection with our own public spaces and communities. So now, if you do see graffiti there, um, you're more likely to report it and, and stay on top of those things. Um, fitness, so, you know, what, Linda, one of our players, lost 35 pounds. She's walked thousands of miles. Um, another player, you know, has sort of changed her lifestyle as well. There's a, the player on the right is uh, Agent Nana, who's, you know, a grandmother in the Seattle community and sort of, I think, you know, bakes cookies for the players. And um, so, uh, you know, the other thing that you see here is it's not just your traditional demographics of what you might think of as gamers. Um, there's different ways to play a game like this. You might be all about the you know, attacking and capturing area and, and blowing up virtual game stuff. Um, but you might just, you know, think it's a lot of fun to explore and take walks in your neighborhood. And maybe the game is to visit all of the portals in San Francisco. Or you might enjoy planning operations or, and c just communicating and being a leader with other players. Um, the map on the right, is, uh, of the left, is of Berlin. This Andre, this one player there, um, he walked 100 miles going all the way around Berlin in two days, you know, hacking all of, you know, hundreds of these game portals as he went. Um, other players have been uh, climbing mountains, uh, doing interesting things. We built this meta game on top of the basic game mechanics of Ingress, where it's almost like a game of virtual uh, hockey or soccer. There's these virtual game objects that we dropped all around the globe, and then players had to coordinate to move these things, transport them around um, to two, two locations. And, what we saw here is that just the amazing cooperation between, uh, between uh, the player groups and the different countries. So you had agents in Israel coordinating with agents in Egypt to move these things together. Um, and so we saw a lot of social dynamics happen from that. We run these, uh, on weekends we'll get these get-togethers in a city, in a park, and we'll, we'll do our own sort of pickup game. I kind of think of it as like pickup basketball where it's like you meet at a certain time and you play for a few hours and then you get beers afterwards. So, you know, we meet at 12 in the city center, you know, we see which team can capture the most portals by 1 p.m., we score that. How many people can capture the most of the city by 2 p.m., we score that, and then there's a winner at 3 p.m., and then everyone gets beers together, and it's a fun experience. So it recreates this, this feelings from your childhood where you would go out and play together with other kids in your neighborhood and out in the street, and you can really see from these photos just the enthusiasm and just the global nature. It's something that appeals to, you know, people around the world and, and all sorts of different, um, groups. Adventures, uh, in this example, the players pooled their money to get together to charter a bush plane for this one player, from, actually from San Diego or Southern California, to go to Alaska to capture this portal. And, uh, you know, she wasn't used to that cold environment, and it was just, but it was this amazing real world adventure that the game instigated. Um, this other player in Russia in, is part of that, that shards game to, of moving those shards around, you know, book travel to the, one of these far eastern port cities in Russia, he actually had to get permission from the, the Secret Service of Russia to go to the city. It was, it's one of those cities where you have to have special clearance, but he was able to board the helicopter and get there in order to move, help move this, this, game, this virtual game object uh, around the world. Um, here's a, a, an anecdote. This uh, player set, he posted this photo, two photos. If you're not aware on your Android phone, it can show you sort of your route, where you've been. So this was the example of how he normally got to work on the left, where it's very straight and direct. And then you see, after playing Ingress, what it looked like on a typical day, where you know he took a right at the park, mulled around. So hopefully he wasn't late to work too often. Um, but you can you can just sort of imagine what a different experience that is to sort of instead of just being in such a rush to get between point A and point B, to actually sort of experience the community around you and meet other people and play as you go between these different um, places. So, you know, a lot of player passion. We've sort of tried to foster this on social networks where people creating their own logos of their local groups and t-shirts and operations, um, artwork and jewelry. So, you know, creativity is really core to the game. The, the locations where you, that you go to capture in the game are art locations because they're in safe locations and they're interesting. Um, people creating their own recruiting posters sort of adopting, you know, sort of like propaganda posters from World War II. It's, there's, there's, a, there's this mythology for each side, and the teams have really embraced that. And, and a lot of these people have never used Photoshop before. They're, they're not really artists, but they've learned these tools to sort of just play along with this as part of the, um, their teamwork. 
So let me just quickly show you one, la one last video with a uh, player story so you can hear it from them, what it's like to play the game. Leaked Niantic technology under the codename Ingress has allowed ordinary citizens to interact with XM. Agents converged on Portland, Oregon. Another confrontation occurred in Milan, Italy. Following the events in San Francisco, it is clear that XM is a very real thing. Weapons will not always win a war. Sometimes it is the hearts of men. And numbers. There's some things you need to know. Started playing as soon as I got the invite. Snap on the sneakers and just ran out of the house. We've been through any number of iterations of our strategies, what we're going to do, where we're going to be. Agent activity is spiking to an all-time high. There are so many kinds of people, and they're always friendly. The community is brilliant. I was not a gamer before. I've made so many connections in my local community that I would have never made otherwise. I think that the world's been ready for something like Ingress for a really long time. But what is Ingress? Ingress is a giant game of the capture the flag. Where you play a video game, but in real life. But it's not just two hills or something like that. It's throughout the world. There's nothing really like it out there. Ingress is a augmented reality game. The Ingress is not a game. The line between reality and a game and the story get blurred. This is the kind of thing that everybody's always wanted to do. Like, you bring video games into real life. Agents are being encouraged to report areas which feature unique works of art, architecture, or... So that really gives you a feel for the, the impact that this has on people's lives. And I, you know, I think that the other opportunity for a game like this is exploring, instead of just selling your game or um, in-app purchasing, you know, ways that you can integrate brands into a location like games like this. So, you know, encouraging people to go to certain retailers or such, I think there's interesting opportunities in this gaming space. Um, and then finally, you know, what's next is uh, our team at Niantic Labs within Google, we really want to launch this as a platform to enable you guys as creative game designers and the gaming community to, to, to build off of this and build other types of gaming experiences that you know, share the same foundation of games out in the real world, but maybe you have an innovative idea for, you know, the zombie version of this or a vampire game or maybe something totally different that uses, um, you know, Fitbit tracking um, or, you know, maybe uh, other types of sensors that are on these, these next generation uh, d wearable devices. Um, so, you know, we're excited to work with the gaming community and we'll be launching, um, hopefully soon, more information about how you can, you can use these, uh, this platform in the future. That's it. Thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the audience? Yep. Do you have, uh, the mic. Just Do you have Bluetooth or NFC uh, in the current uh, game? It's a good idea. Um, no, right now um, we don't currently use you know the Bluetooth technology or NFC, but you can imagine, I'm sure, like lots of cool ideas that you could do for a game like that, where you're finding hidden treasures and tapping your phone. So. I think that's a great idea. I think the principle of my talk really is to just, as you see these new technologies emerge, whether it be things like NFC or you know, other types of devices, just really take a step back and really start from scratch about like, thinking through like, what are the new types of game experiences that you could build with those, um, those technologies. Yeah. So given it's a sandbox experience, how, how are you guys focused on monetization with it, if at all? Yeah, right now, um, our strategy has been about this uh, sponsorships. So you know, I think the interesting thing about this genre of game is that people are out in the real world. So we've done some, some experimentation so far with real brands. So for example, um, we turned all of the Dwayne Reed drugstores in New York City into locations in the game. Uh, we did that with uh, Jamba Juice locations here in the Bay Area. And then we've been tracking you know, how effective that is uh, at driving real players to those store locations. And then we think that, you know, Google has a, a cost per click model. I think potentially there's a cost per visit model there where an advertiser could pay to sort of turn up the dial, either the output of game objects that are, that are, uh, are farmable from that location. And, you know, I think we can hopefully see, build a direct connection between that and, you know, hopefully driving customers to, to locations.
Um, so I saw like you had those like portals or things like artwork uh -huh. in, uh, in real life. Are, is is it like user generated? What what is actually a portal, or is it something that you you have people you know employed to do for you? Yeah, at, at this point, it's primarily user generated content. So we actually we started off with some photos that we had as part of Google Maps, and we we had some of them tagged. So we had some tagged as like sculpture or mural or fountain. So we, we seeded the game with that, but then now agents themselves can take photos of things they find interesting and submit it. And then we have people who review those and add them into the game. I think a next step in the future would be letting the players themselves start to police that, where maybe if four players agree that it should be part of the game, it gets added. But that's another sort of idea for you guys as you, if you want to build a game like this is you can have a system where your players can help build and police the, the game board out in the real world. Um. How have you uh, done at sort of figuring out monetization for things like a treasure hunt or something like that? For like a treasure hunt? Yeah. I think, I mean, I think there's a, d a couple different ways you could do that. You could do it sponsored. Um, so we did one event uh, at South by Southwest where Doritos was a partner and they had these, these multimedia vaults that they set up at a certain 7-Eleven locations that had special product in it. And we integrated that into the game. But I do think that there's opportunities for um, things like, uh, you know, player-generated missions or such, where um, you know players could build their own sort of cool uh, tours and experiences, and that could be incorporated with. Uh, you could incorporate brands and sponsorships into that. Anyone else? Oh. Hey, Brandon. Hey. Um, just wondering, uh, when you guys plan on opening up the platform to third-party developers? Um, so we're starting this year, um, we've announced this, uh, our second game title called Endgame, um, where we're helping build that in-house, but then we're working with a few select um, game studios uh, this year to build a few more games and really build out the platform. Very cool. And then we hope by next year to be able to just launch that to the public, where if you and your buddies have an idea for a game, you could just sort of grab the platform and, and read the documentation and, and go for it. But if, if there are you know, game developers who are interested in working with us early, Certainly come up and talk to me, and, and we're looking for you know, really good people that want to work with us on, on ideas for games. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yep.